into the dark Some things are better that all I've done now And I'll never find you here Cause no one's ever, no one's ever Common Sense content is intended for mature audiences only. Enjoy. Multiverse Broadcasting System Initiated. Multiverse connection established. Lasers. Hello. Multiverse connection secure. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. This is my life DIY and. Hi, this is Jojo. Hi, my name is Oz. Hey, everybody, it's AJ the Rippin' Rabbit. This is Cynthia Sue Larson. This is your man Meta. AKA Propagate This Light. And you're now listening to Dark Wolf's Den. The Dark Wolf's Den Show on Rippin' 
Common Sense Radio. Our ghost drill. We had a thousand hours of continuous communication with the spirit world. Does time travel actually exist? The laws of physics seem to be compatible with time machines. You know, sometimes I wonder about reincarnation, don't you? A four-year-old boy in Adelaide, Australia, has told his parents that he used to be Britain's Prince Diana. What would happen if the world found out that aliens were real? I didn't say disclosure would be easy, but what is the alternative? To establish a space force as the sixth branch of the armed forces. We have so many questions and yet so little time, so to have you here, the pleasure is all mine. Coming to you from a secret cave, hidden deep within the wilderness, this is the Dark Wolf's Den Show. Now, here is your host, Jerry Hicks. That's right, I am Jerry Hicks, also known as the Dark Wolf. And we are broadcasting live across the multiverse from a secret cave hidden deep down in the Tennessee wilderness. That's right. We're ripping through the electromagnetic soup, tearing through the atmosphere, and tunneling away into your radio like a quantum particle. This is the Dark Wolf's Den Show for Wednesday, September 8th, 2021. So whether you're on the edge of reality, the edge of the galaxy, or the edge of your seat, we're glad you chose us to be right there with you. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we carry on our discussion on the states of mystery as we jump across the ocean to our one and only state not connected to the mainland in any way, and that is, of course, the great state of Hawaii. And this state, of course, carries many, many a Samoan legend. Uh, Not to count all the other fun paranormal things in Hawaii. And we'll get to all that and more here in just a moment. But first, let's check in on our chat rooms over here on YouTube on board with us tonight. So it seems we're and having if a you little are bit listening on the radio here, and you would like to join us really live in the chat uh, rooms over fool. here, we are on I two we've different got channels over there on, on YouTube, YouTube uh, at uh, the uh, moment. Um, um, do, we do we have sound, have sound ladies, ladies and gentlemen? gentlemen can, can you hear me? Hear check, check one, two, two check, check one, two. two. We are are definitely definitely having having some issues issues tonight. tonight. Uh, I know Uh, the radio radio is working. working, Uh, uh, Go ahead and put a one one in the chat room, room, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, uh, if if you you can can hear us. us. Um, Um, Yeah, yeah, it's acting really really silly silly tonight, man, Danny Mall. Echo. I don't know why there's an echo. I honest to goodness have no idea. There's nothing else on here. Nothing else on. I don't know if the drivers drivers are acting acting up up or or what what the deal deal is 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 causing causing this echo. echo. Lou Gehrig Gehrig sounds, oh wow. wow. Uh, All right, Uh, I'll try to pull up the the YouTube here in just a moment moment and uh, and, uh, see what I can do. But but, uh, Errol Taylor Taylor in the house house tonight, tonight. Michael Michael Fontaine, Fontaine, where milk is $10 a gallon, excellent. XGen, evening fellow traveler, evening XGen. Sandy B and hi, y'all. Sign on Jerry's channel first. Hey, Sandy B, glad to have you here. Uh, congratulations, uh, congratulations to Sandy, to Sandy B, the champion, champion now, now of the of Tuesday, the Tuesday night, night videos. videos. And I'm still, and I'm still trying, to trying to see what, what in, the in the world is causing, is causing this to, to uh, double up on me here. here. I, don't, I don't. Is it is still, still echoing, echoing, guys? guys? If so, if so, I do I apologize. apologize. I don't, I don't understand, understand uh, what, uh, is what is causing the issue at the, at moment. the moment. But we'll try, we'll try to get that next day as quickly, quickly as, as we, we can. can. Uh, uh, we got here Raider, Raider Nation, Nation working, working on the new channel, channel stuff. stuff. Uh, uh, Rip and Rapid Rabbit Hole, please stand by. Yeah, we, yeah, are, we so are sorry, sorry we're, we're having, having um, issues, issues with the episode, with the episode tonight. tonight. We'll, we'll try to continue, continue to get to fix it. Alvi Yarder, yay, but it's not loud enough. I've tried to fix that. 
Uh, it says we have some echo there. there. Sounding, Sounding good now. It says we have some echo. It says Errol Taylor. Errol, 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 glad to have you. Then over then in the Dark Wolf, Dark Wolf Den Show, we got, we got uh, Sandy, uh, Sandy B also, also, Michael Fontaine, Michael Fontaine also. also. Uh, don't know what don't happened. Know what just, happened. Cut just cut yeah, off. Yeah, we're having a lot of internet issues right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Uh, uh, Chris, Chris Spivey. Spivey, good to good see, to my, see old my old friend Chris, Chris, there's Chris, 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 way, 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 way back, back to my, uh, my uh, uh, early, uh, early, early years, like brother, brother, brother Timothy, great, great to have you here, Mr. Chris, Chris, and every, and every last, last one, of, one you of you guys. And if you are listening on the radio and you would like to join us live in the chat rooms over here, we are on two different channels simulcasting across the YouTube. We are on the Rippin' Rabbit Hole YouTube channel. That is, of course, the channel connected to our radio station, Rippin' Common Sense Radio, as well as being on the Dark Wolf's Den Radio Show channel or Dark Wolf's Den Show YouTube channel. Uh, and as well as coming out across RippinRabbitHole.com, that is R-I-P-O-N, R-A-B-B-I-T-H-O-L-E.com, as well as, of course, on the airwaves in Rippin, Wisconsin, and across the world. Shout out to all of you once again. If you'd like to join us in the chat, it is over on YouTube at either the Dark Wolf Stin Show or Rippin Rabbit Hole YouTube channel. Uh, now, before we get into the fun of Hawaii tonight, of course, we've got a couple more little segments to get out of the way. Like our next segment here, one of my personal favorite segments, that is, of course, the Today in History. This Today in History is for anybody that practices Kirkinism. Looking at you, John, if you're listening to me. Uh, I had a buddy years ago that had that on his dog tags, Kirkinism. Uh, If you practice Kirkinism, or if you're uh, just a great big nerd like I am and many, many others, then you will know that on this day in 1966, Star Trek first premieres on NBC TV, starring William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy, of course, the great Captain Kirk himself and Mr. Spock. That happened on this day in 1966, and that is today's Today in History. And of course, like I said, I am a huge Trekkie myself. I wasn't always as big a fan of, of Captain Kirk as I am of, of Captain Picard. Uh, but for for those wondering what Kirkinism is, if you remember Captain James Kirk, and uh, I'll try to put this in a family-friendly way, uh, no matter what planet they were from or color of their skin, they were not off-limits, if you know what I mean. So uh, that, my friends, is Kirkinism. And I actually used to know a guy that practiced Kirkinism. Uh, at least that's what it said on his dog tags. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the shovel down before I dig this hole any deeper, ladies and gentlemen. And move on to our next segment. Say what? And of course, this is the part usually where I do a quote of the day. Uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different this time. More of a fact about Hawaii today. Uh, The park rangers at Hawaii National Park receive packages every year from tourists who have taken volcanic rocks from Kilauea. The tourists claim that the rocks were bad luck from Pele, the goddess of fire, lightning, dance, volcanoes, and violence. And that is an interesting fact because uh, you remember we heard about the Bell Witch Cave as well as a number of other places I'm sure we've talked about over the last, uh, what, year and a half uh, that has discussed this phenomenon of uh, bad luck or cursed objects being taken from a place and then sent back to them. So I thought that was a really, really neat fact to start this show off with. Uh, But that is this segment of Say What? And like I said a moment ago, uh, we have seen this a number of times where uh, an object is taken from a paranormal location uh, only to be brought back very quickly indeed from whoever took it, claiming that it has given them a lot of bad luck. And perhaps that is the case, and if it is, it's only one of many, many paranormal Uh, instances that have to do, of course, this time with Hawaii. And Hawaii definitely has its fair share of cryptids 
two. Uh, as we uh, get started tonight, we're going to start off with one that uh, is very well known amongst most cryptozoolo cryptozoological researchers or cryptozoologists. Uh, this one is called the Menehune. And before, and before we, we do, do get, get deeper, deeper into, into this, this, I just, I want, just to want to make sure, sure that we are, we are sounding, sounding good, good across, across all platforms. All platforms. Uh, it's, uh, it's looking, looking like, like it's sounding, sounding good, good over, over here. here. I, just I just want, want to make to sure uh, that, we're that we're sounding, sounding good. So go ahead and put, ahead put a one in the chat room, room for me, guys, guys, if you would. Let me know you can hear me loud and clear over there. Those guys listening on the radio across the world, I do sincerely apologize. I believe we've got it fixed now. And somebody said we still have an echo, so we'll see what we can do. The good people of this region have been seeing a race of dwarf-like humans very similar to that of Homo floresiensis, going back for centuries. Now these creatures are said to be about two to three feet tall, very muscular, and in some cases, very hairy. And thank you to the Paranormal Junkie YouTube channel that we're listening to now. Uh, appreciate the work he has done over there. But the Menehune, two to three feet tall, hairy and very muscular little creatures. One thing we have not seen during this state traveling that we've been doing uh, with the state of mystery is the little people. We haven't really seen any little people cryptids until now. Uh, perhaps they were all hiding in Hawaii on the beach, right? I <laughs> can't blame them. I'd like to be on the beach right now myself, but uh, in all seriousness, let's find out a little more about the Menahune. The locals believe that these small human-like beings sleep during the day and they hunt at night. That sounds like my kind of guys. As everyone knows, the dark wolf is definitely a nocturnal creature, also sleeping at night and hunting in the daytime. We hunt truth, but it's still hunting, right? Especially in today's social climate. <laughs> Now, according to Hawaiian folklore, these creatures have a magical side, and they can communicate telepathically. Now, telepathy is not something that we normally see amongst these cryptid creatures, uh, let alone general human creatures, uh, but especially any with telepathy. As a matter of fact, most of our telepathy cases we found come from, like, alien sightings and, and interactions, right? Uh, they don't normally come from cryptid creatures. However, this particular one is said to have that ability. They're also known to be great builders. It is believed that they're responsible for building all types of things, from temples to bridges to fish ponds, and some native Hawaiians even believe that they are descendants of these beings. And again, what I find very interesting is you have the tales of the little people from Ireland uh, who were also known to be builders. Uh, there were also the tales of the little shoes uh, uh, cobblers, right? Uh, there were many, many tales of the little people uh, being uh, free builders and enjoying building, that being one of their favorite trades. So uh, it's almost like a group of these have migrated into the American area. Uh, albeit Hawaii, but still the Americas. Now there are a lot of sightings of these small human-like creatures, and one of the most famous of these sightings happened in the 1940s by a group of school children. I absolutely love a good case file with multiple witnesses at the same time. According to the reports, the children started to observe a group of very small beings jumping and swinging in the trees outside the school. And once these creatures realized that they were being watched, they ran to the churchyard that was across the street, and they disappeared into small holes. Now, so far, I will be honest and say uh, that this does sound like a bunch of monkeys to me, and I mean that in all literality. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you think it's a uh, bunch of monkeys that have been just uh, misidentified, or do you think possibly uh, that it is really these Minohune cryptid creatures? Go ahead, put a one in the chat room if uh, you think it is definitely the uh, Minohune creatures. Uh, go ahead, put a two in the chat room if uh, you think it's just monkeys uh, and a misidentification. Put a three in the chat room if you're not entirely sure just yet. Now, after the sighting, the churchyard was examined and they couldn't find any holes or tunnels on the property. But what is really interesting about this mass sighting is that it wasn't just the 45 school children that witnessed this. 
the school superintendent also saw these creatures. So, of course, as far-fetched as it is, uh, one could still make the argument that the children all witnessed something that they just weren't familiar with and misinterpreted what they seen, which is a fair argument until you get the school superintendent and adult involved uh, who would quite well know what they seen. Uh, not to count the fact that the holes that, that wherever they disappeared into literally disappeared themselves uh but this is a really really intriguing case like i said because now you've got the adult who have also witnessed the same thing but let's see what you guys are saying over here in the youtube chat rooms remember the question was one if you believe it's the minahune that the children seen two if you think it's monkeys and three once again if you were unsure let's see what you guys said over there we have my life a DIY over here uh, uh, saying, saying well, I got well, to get the right, the right one, one for saying, for saying one, one absolutely, absolutely believes, believes that it, it is, is. I don't, I don't forgot forgot the question. question. It's, it's one, one of those, one those nice ladies and gentlemen. We got so much, so much going, going on, on here tonight. tonight. I, can't I can't even begin. begin. Uh, one, uh, one, believe it is the Minahone. Says, says my life, my life DIY, DIY Sandy, Sandy, Sandy B with a 3 on sure, sure, Raider, Raider champion, champion with a 1.5 1. 1. 5. probably, probably the men who may but not, not 100%, 100 sure. sure I'll be a I'll monkey's uncle says Manny 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 Mall. Mall. Yeah, I yeah, I don't know why every now and then, and then it's deciding, deciding to echo, echo and then every now and then not it's acting really 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 silly tonight I'm gonna see what I can do to try to fix this but I have, I have no, no idea, idea what, in, what the in the world is, is going, going on. Uh, we're uh, definitely, we're definitely fighting, fighting with the equipment tonight. tonight. Very, very, very strange. strange. I do, I do hope, hope the echo isn't, isn't too bad. bad. Man, Danny, Danny Mall, Mall with the ones, ones is probably, probably real. real. Over here, Over here in, in the Dark, Dark Wolf Din Show chat room, chat room we've got... One, one from, from Chris Spivey, Spivey. definitely, definitely the, the Minahune, Michael, Michael Fontaine, Fontaine with the, with the one. ones, definitely the Minahune, also... All right, All right, so, so uh, uh, we're going to continue, continue to work, work on this, this broadcast, broadcast and, and uh, in, the in the meantime, May 2006, a woman was driving home and a very large group of these creatures ran right in front of her car. She described them as about three feet tall and she also said that they were very hairy. So once again, it sounds like tiny little uh, versions of Bigfoot. It sounds like they're tiny foots, right? <laughs> uh, but if they are tiny foots, then their cousins also may live on this same uh, stretch of islands. Of course, that being Mr. Bigfoot himself, as we've tracked across a lot of the different states uh, that we've looked into so far. And Hawaii, interestingly enough, is no different. Now in this region, there are also sightings of Bigfoot-like creatures. In 1973, a 35 year old named Rob Carlson reported to the authorities that he had a very strange and a very terrifying encounter one day while out fishing for catfish. According to his report, he just got done setting up catfish traps and he was just about to head home when all of a sudden he heard an otherworldly howl. He had never heard anything like it before and this howl terrified him. Now this noise was so unique and strange that he thought that maybe his friends were playing a joke on him, as everyone knew that he fishes there quite often. Then Rob started to hear some noises in the brush. He was expecting to see one of his friends pop out and say, gotcha. But instead, he came face to face with a seven to eight foot hairy female-like creature. Now, he described the Bigfoot as female, uh, which is incredibly descriptive considering the couple of seconds that he probably actually witnessed this thing, uh, let alone the state of panic he would have been in. So... Uh, to have such a specific descriptor is intriguing, to say the least. Then Rob went right into panic mode, and he ran as fast as he could. Now when he stopped to catch his breath, he looked back and saw that this creature was following him. Rob described it as a huge hairy woman, and he felt that this beast was very curious. It's as if this creature had never seen a human before. But Rob did not want to make friends. He was scared to death, and he just kept running until he got home. Now the next day, he had no choice. He had to go back to collect his traps, and he did notice some huge footprints measuring about 20 inches. Now there are some things that makes this sighting a little different than your typical Bigfoot sighting. As when Rob first saw this creature, he thought that it was a huge hairy woman, not a huge hairy ape. And he also noticed that this huge female creature was wearing very light clothing around her waist. 
making this a very unique encounter. Now what's really interesting about the sighting is not that far away from Rob's encounter, there is a two-lane road that runs through a pineapple plantation. And throughout the years, people driving on this road have reported to the cops that they have seen a huge eight-foot-plus bipedal human ape-like creature. And the locals are terrified of this thing. Well, if there's a pineapple plantation here, maybe, ladies and gentlemen, we just figured out what Bigfoot's favorite meal is. Perhaps it is the pineapple, right? Uh, hopefully, we've got this fixed now. I doubt it at this point. One night after an accident, a man told the cops that a huge hairy man smashed into his car and it almost flipped it over. Now, this location is not really that remote, making us wonder what the heck is going on here. But what do you guys think so far? Uh, do you think Bigfoot and Littlefoot roam the island? We've got the mini-me and the super-sized me. <laughs> uh, me being Bigfoot this time. Uh, or do you think that they're both just great big hoaxes? Uh, go ahead, put a one in the chat room if you think both the Littlefoot and the Bigfoot are real creatures that are inhabiting the islands of Hawaii. Or go ahead and put a two in the chat room if you think, nope, those were both just fake hoaxes, somebody messed with someone else. Or go ahead and put a three in the chat room if you're really unsure either way. It could be real, but eh, maybe not. And while we are waiting for the uh, responses to come in from you guys over there in the chat, we'll go ahead and uh, start on our next cryptid. Now in Hawaii, there's also sightings of huge giant lizards, and the locals say that these lizards can grow to about 30 feet long. It is believed that they live in deep caves, pools, and ponds across the island. Some Hawaiians believe that these creatures are guardians, and they also possess supernatural powers. Now it is starting to sound to me uh, like everything in Hawaii has some type of supernatural abilities. Uh, it kind of makes me want to go to Hawaii, right? Maybe I'll get some supernatural abilities. Now, these lizards are a huge part of Hawaiian folklore, but most locals do believe, without a shadow of a doubt, that they do exist. One very famous mass sighting happened in 1838 when one of these giant lizards appeared before thousands of amazed and awestruck witnesses. Another more recent sightings happened to a woman named Maggie when her and her mother witnessed one of these creatures swimming in a nearby pond. Now these creatures seem to be more mythical than actual, but because there has been a lot of sightings of these giant lizards going back for centuries, some believe that it could be possible that a rather large unknown species of lizard could in fact exist on the Hawaiian Islands. If you guys remember the pilot episode of the Dark Wolf's Den show, I know that's been a while. Uh, one of the things we discussed on that show uh, was the fact that the Komodo dragon was considered a cryptid creature for a very long time. Of course, now we know today that the Komodo dragon is a real thing, uh, but scientists of its time said no, uh, a lizard could not grow to that size. That is impossible. Uh, clearly, it's not as impossible as science once said. So, the idea of a oversized lizard possibly living on the Hawaiian Islands is not only possible, it's incredibly plausible. But speaking of possible and plausible, uh, let's see what you guys said about Bigfoot and Littlefoot on the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, can they pos or are they real? Uh, did you guys say that they are real with the one, two with a not so real? And three with a, I eh, really don't know. And over here on YouTube, we've, we've got, got Mandani, Mandani Mall, Mall says, says Aloha, Aloha one. one. Uh, uh, little, little known fact, fact did you know, know that Aloha, Aloha means, means both hello, hello and goodbye? And goodbye? Maybe, that's Maybe that's not, not such a little, little known, known fact, fact but uh, uh, the fact just the same. The same. Uh, uh, Sandy, Sandy B, Bigfoot, Bigfoot is everywhere with the one. There we go. Uh, Michael, Michael Fontaine, Fontaine, she probably, that, that is not meant for this show. All right. Uh, Man uh, Man Danny Mall with, with, her, uh, with, uh, with a, a uh, couple, couple of dragons and dinosaurs and, dinosaurs and, alligators, and alligators there. there. Uh, uh, my Life DIY, DIY with, the with the one, one that is all over in the Ribbon Rabbit Hole chat room. Over in the Dark Wolf's Din Show chat room, we have no answers to this one. I don't know if everybody jumped over to the Ribbon Rabbit Hole or what, but if you'd like to join us either way, we are both on Ribbon Rabbit Hole YouTube and Dark Wolf's Din Show YouTube chat. chat. Uh, you, uh, may you may be the only, the only one, one over in Dark Wolf's Din Show, Din Show chat. Uh, uh, solo, solo Dolo over there, there right?
Another creature that we find coming up a lot in our State of Mystery series, interestingly enough, are the dinosaurs, right? Uh, and we may have yet another case of a dinosaur, except this time in the skies of Hawaii. In 1999, two soldiers on the island of Oahu witnessed something very strange in the night sky. They reported observing a very outflying creature that seemed to be glowing. Now they observed this creature for quite some time, and they said that this flying beast must have had a wingspan of at least 20 feet. It had an elongated head, a very short neck with angular wings, and a very long tail. I don't know about you guys, but this... ...mass sighting of a huge bird-like creature flying over the international airport, and the description was identical to that of the two soldiers. Then again in 2013, a family was driving along a very dark road at night on the Big Island when all of a sudden their headlights revealed a massive flying monster. Now the headlights scared this beast and it took off right in the direction of the car, almost hitting it. The family was shocked beyond belief as they had never seen anything like it before. They said that this creature must have had a wingspan of about 10 feet and they all believed to this very day that they saw a pterodactyl. I am very glad to know that I'm not the only one that took that description to sound like a pterodactyl. Apparently, the witnesses also have taken that description to sound like a pterodactyl. Uh, and they're the ones that seen it, so uh, let's hope that we can rely on their answer just a little bit more. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, there's been a number of dinosaurs that we've run across, and especially the pterosaur or the pterodactyl, right? Uh, do you guys think that there is a bunch of pterodactyls that still exist on this earth? Uh, are we definitely sharing the planet with pterodactyls or dinosaurs that have not, you know, uh, died out yet? Or do you think those are just, you know, oversized tails, if you will, and nothing to be had of them? Uh, and go ahead and uh, let me know in the chat room. Put a one in the chat room if you think that they are absolutely real, that we keep finding these dinosaurs uh, across all these different states, that there is actually something to it. Uh, go ahead, put a two in the chat room if you think somebody's just really having a lot of fun in these different states uh, and making fake dinosaur reports and, and whatnot. Or go ahead and put a three in the chat room uh, if you're... Not quite sure if the dinosaurs could be, but not sure that they couldn't be either. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I started this show, uh, I've studied paranormal for a long, long time. Uh, but when we started running across these uh, dinosaurs in the state of mystery, I was a little bit skeptical. I did not expect to keep finding dinosaurs over and over and over in all these different states. Uh, I knew they all had cryptids. I did not know that they all had dinosaur cryptids, right? Uh, but let's see what you guys said over there in the chat. Is it uh, all bunkum uh, with a two, or is it uh, absolutely real? These dinosaurs are definitely existing um, across all these different states and probably across the world, or uh, is it a three with the completely and absolutely on the fence and unsure? Let's see what you guys said over in the chat rooms. On the uh, Rippin' Rabbit Hole chat, uh, we've got Man Danny Mall with the one. Says, absolutely, dinosaurs are real and they're in every state. Um, and listening to the replay now, or the playback, it sounds like we have got this echo issue fixed. I do apologize uh, that it kept going back and forth. Uh, looks like we finally got the driver issue covered and got it all fixed. Uh, Raider Champion with the three says, uh, no, not quite sure. It, it could be, maybe, not quite sure. Uh, just stick around for the rest of the uh, states we have left in the State of Mystery series, and let's see if we can find out, right? Uh, Mandani Mall says hoaxes happen too. That's true. There are a lot of hoaxes that happen. Uh, perhaps that's people's favorite hoax, and we don't know about it, right? The dinosaur hoax. <laughs> uh, my life DIY also with the one. Um, can you guys not hear me very well out there now? Do we have another issue? Volume is low now. Let's bring that volume back up here. How do we sound now, guys? We should be sounding a little bit better. 
uh, messing with the board here, trying to figure things out. Man, this has been the roughest uh, broadcast we've had so far, but I am not giving up. Good now, says Sandy B. Perfect, says my life. I think we finally, it only took us half the show, right, guys? It only took us till, till almost halftime, but we finally got the issues figured out. Uh, I do appreciate everybody's patience hanging out over in both chat rooms uh, as well as across the radio, guys. I thank you so very much for hanging in there with me. Uh, we've had a lot of driver and in, in issues tonight, uh, uh, computer issues, things like that that so uh, definitely got the broadcast going out wild and right tonight now uh, that we're about halfway through the show right uh, Hawaiian curse you, you know what it may just very well be the Hawaiians are, are quite mad at me uh, for for covering them right um, maybe it's the night marchers we'll find out about the night marchers here in the second half uh, speaking of the second half <laughs> There is a lot more rabbit hole to cover on the mysterious state of Hawaii. Uh, but we do have to go ahead and take a network break right here. So, uh, folks, my name is Jerry Hicks, also known as The Dark Wolf. You're listening to The Dark Wolf's Den Radio Show exclusively on Rippin' Common Sense Radio, The Rippin' Rabbit Hole. We'll be right back with the second half after these messages. Don't you touch that dial. That's right. We gotta stoke the fires and run off the men in black. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Oh yeah, that howl means your weekend has begun. Hi everyone, it's AJ the Rippin' Rabbit. Are you enjoying the Dark Wolf's Den radio show for Wednesday, September 8th? I know I am. If you are and you haven't done so already, please make sure to thumb up that video. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. You'll get our notifications every time we go live. We're here every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights bringing you the very best of common sense radio the rip and rabbit hole jerry hicks and the dark wolf's den show will return again tomorrow night thursday september 9th come along with him as he howls through sea monsters it's going to be interesting to see how jerry gets sea monsters in a dark wolf den but it's going to happen tomorrow night, Thursday, September 9th. Starts at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central, as all shows do. And then I'll take back to the airwaves again Friday night, September 10th, as we explore down the rabbit hole of coincidence theory. That's right. You've heard of conspiracy theories. We're going to talk all about coincidence theories Friday night. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. Then Saturday night, September 11th, we'll remember that unbelievable day in 2001 as we look at remembering the 20th anniversary of September 11th. Can you believe it? My, oh my, how time does fly. Then we're going to end out the weekend right together with you Sunday night, September 12th. Come along with us as we dive down the rabbit hole of animal politics. That's right. We're going to take you to the political animal farm and end out the weekend right together with you Sunday, September 12th. Again, starts at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central, as all shows do. If you were not here last Sunday, last Sunday night for the first Sunday of September, you may not be aware that the beat Eugene the third actually didn't happen. Well, as far as the name goes, nobody beat Eugene for the first time ever in the history of the game. Eugene was on the top spot of the podium with 10 out of 20 questions right. Followed again in second place by Eric the Fred and in third place on the podium, Terry Taggart. My top hats off to everyone who participated Sunday night. It was a fun game. We had the Dark Wolf's Den show there with My Life DIY, JoJo's Big D played along, Sandy B, even Biz Wolfer and Juanito 1975, along with Earth Daughter and a few others. Yet nobody was able to beat Eugene. We'll return back to the Dark Wolf's Den radio show for State of Mystery. 
Hawaii. You're listening to the Rip and Common Sense Radio Network, the Rip and Rabbit Hole. Reestablishing multiverse connection. <laughs> Established and secure. This is my life DIY and Hi, this is Jojo. Hi, my name is Ash. Hey everybody, it's AJ the Rippin' Rabbit. This is Cynthia Sue Larson. This is your man Meta, aka Propagate This Light. And you're now listening to Dark Wolf's Den. To Dark Wolf's Den Show on Rippin' Common Sense Radio. If you were meant to be controlled, you would have come with a remote. But you didn't. And that's why you listen to the Dark Wolf's Den Show. Now, here is your host, Jerry Hicks. That's right, I am Jerry Hicks, also known as the Dark Wolf. And welcome back to the second half of the Dark Wolf's Den Show for Wednesday, September the 8th, 2021. So whether you're on the edge of a reality, the edge of the galaxy, or the edge of your seat, We're glad you chose us to be right there with you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us tonight, if you're just tuning in, we are talking about the state of mystery of Hawaii. So far in the first half, we went over a number of cryptid creatures, uh, a good variety indeed. And in this half, we're going to cover both UFOs and ghosts. And Hawaii is definitely known for a large variety of paranormal incidents. Uh, One of which happened uh, probably about six months ago, maybe even a year. No, about ten months ago, actually. Uh, And it was the day before I did a show. So I've actually presented this before on this channel. Uh, And somehow uh, we've come back around to where I'm going to be presenting this again. Uh, And this is a UFO sighting in the last year in Hawaii, a really strange one at that. Officials from the Federal Aviation Administration say there were no aircraft incidents or accidents in this area Tuesday night, but multiple witnesses report seeing a large blue object fall out of the sky and into the ocean. Something is in the sky. What is that? 826 Tuesday night near Haleakala Avenue in Nanakuli. Not long after, a woman named Mariah spotted the same thing passing over Princess Kahanu Estates. Which is probably the response that most of us would have if we seen something there that really should not have been. I started calling my husband then because it was all in the garage. I was like, hey, come look at that. The 38-year-old says she's never really been a believer in UFOs, but the bright blue object had them so intrigued, they jumped in the car and started following it. I don't know what it was. This one was going so fast. The journey ended less than three miles from where it began, on Farrington Highway in front of the Board of Water Supply building, after the object appeared to drop into the ocean. On a f***ing line in the water, whatever it is. Call 911 for have like some cop or somebody to come out and um come check them out. While officers were on scene, she says they spotted a second light. My husband went look up and he seen the white one coming. The white one was smaller, was coming in the same direction as the blue one. They lost sight of the object after it passed over a nearby mountain. So whatever this was, they followed it just as far as they could follow it before they ran out of uh, ability. This morning, we asked Honolulu police if investigators figured out what fell in the water. A spokesperson told us they didn't have any information. Meanwhile, officials from the FAA said they received a report from police Tuesday night about a possible plane down in the area. Okay, surely the FAA has the answer. You know, they know of all the aircraft that's in and out, and, you know, surely they will know what this was. But had no aircraft disappear off radars. 
and no reports of overdue or missing aircraft. Well, that seriously complicates things. If the FAA can't help and has no idea, maybe it is a UFO. Although Mariah's had a couple days to think about it, she says she's still baffled by what she saw. To this day, I don't know. If you guys can find out what it was, I'll let you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> Allison Blair, Hawaii News Now. Thank you, Allison. And what an amazing uh, story there. Whatever it was, dipped down into the water. And as we know, that is not as far-fetched as one may originally uh, think that it is. Uh, with the idea of alien bases being underwater, uh, a variety, most likely, of alien bases being underwater, uh, that is not completely far-fetched, even a little bit. But you guys let me know what you think, right? Do you think it is a real UFO that possibly just went to its alien base and uh, that's what was seen in the waters, in the sky above Hawaii? Or was it possibly more of a uh, military aircraft or something man-made or of this earth? Uh, go ahead and put a 1 in the chat room if you think it's absolutely real 100% aliens coming down and going home to their base. Uh, go ahead, put a two in the chat room if you really think this is the military or uh, someone else messing around with the people of Hawaii. And put a three if you really don't know either way. It could be military, it could be UFO, not quite sure. Go ahead and put a three in the chat room. Uh, and speaking of far fetch Another thing that is not far-fetched, at least not on this show, uh, is ghost stories, right? And Hawaii has a really incredible one. Uh, I started to put this in the cryptid area, but the more I listen to this, the more I realize this definitely belongs in the ghost story area. Uh, these are called the Night Marchers of Hawaii. Check this out. And before we do get into that, go ahead and check the chat room over here. Welcome, Preliminal. Glad to have you here, bud. Or Preliminal, I think he said exactly how it is supposed to be. Uh, I do apologize for those that were over on the Dark Wolf's Den show. Apparently, we're having some issues on that channel, too. So uh, we'll just re-upload the show over there. Preliminal says one uh, absolutely believes... And let me get my... Guys, I am not having the best night tonight. Uh, absolutely believes that it's real. Uh, one and two are the same thing. There you go. Three, not sure. Uh, that's an interesting case, right? Errol Taylor says, one, definitely believes it was aliens out there. Uh, three, my opinion is falling angels, said guideline strike Jeremy Forbes. Uh, yeah, we're all working on those guideline strikes, I do think, right? Uh, <laughs> but seriously. Uh, so it looks like a, kind of a mixed bag here. Uh, uh, more ones than anything. Definitely believes that it was an alien something. Uh, Prelude Minimal says he pulled up the video over there. It's an incredible video uh, to watch that fall into the, the uh, water like that. Uh, it's it's really, really strange case. Uh, of course, not the only UFO case out of Hawaii, but definitely a strange one indeed. In ancient Hawaii, processions announcing the approach of great people were commonplace. Such nobles, called ali'i, were believed to be descended from the gods, and also that they possessed a divine power that stemmed from the spiritual energy of their ancestors. They would walk across the islands to check in on their lands, march to battle, and keep up noble appearances. And to give people notice and time to prepare, their guards and heralds would announce their march with drums. This was for the commoner's benefit, for when they heard processions approach, they would have to give way. Because to touch or disrespect an ali'i, even by letting their shadow fall on you, meant immediate death from one of their retainers. And that's where the night marchers come in. A living story tradition that takes place on every Hawaiian island. So these are the ghosts of the warriors that were said to have been uh, divinely created by the gods or ancestors of the gods, end quote. On certain nights, these spirits of warriors, great leaders, and even the gods themselves emerge and march towards sacred sites and ancient battlegrounds. And you'll know when they're coming. Because you'll catch a whiff of volcanic sulfur or rot in the air and feel hot winds pushing grass and tree branches aside to make way for the honored spirits. 
Dressed for battle in feathered capes and helmets, and armed with spears and clubs, they beat loud drums and blow conch shells to announce their arrival. And it is known that us common mortals must heed this call and make way for them, or else face deadly consequences. For anyone caught even looking upon a night marcher without showing the proper respect or deference will be punished. And death is not the only punishment in which you may incur. You might be maimed. You might become deathly ill or drop from a heart attack when a warrior points his spear at your chest. Or most terrifying of all, a bolt of intense light and blistering heat might shoot from the marcher's eyes, incinerating the watcher. Whoa, they got laser eyes? I'm kind of jealous. I want laser eyes. That's freaking cool. Uh, but seriously, I've never heard of a ghost story uh, where the ghost possesses laser eyes or the ability to harm using said laser eyes. So uh, this one is intriguing, no doubt. Now, should you hear the night marchers or see a long procession of eerie torches in the night, there's only one thing to do. Run as far and as fast as you can. But if they're too close and fleeing is out of the question, it's said that your last resort is to strip naked, lie face down, perhaps even defecate on yourself, and don't dare look up. Now, as incredibly gross as that sounded, uh, I would rather do all of that and stay alive than no longer be around, right? Or to have the curse of the night watchers upon me. For the night marchers, might view this as extreme reverence, or perhaps think you're sick or mentally ill and move on. Well, I mean, that makes sense. They would probably think you're a little screwy in the head, but what would you guys do? Would you follow the uh, suggestions, get naked, get on the ground, and possibly defecate on yourself? Blah. Or would you uh, just act like nothing happened and see what your uh, consequences end up being? Go ahead, put a one in the chat room if you would follow the uh, traditional way of greeting the night marchers put a two in the chat room if you wouldn't carry the way you just kind of stand there and wave at them uh, put a three in the chat room if you just don't know if you don't know if you would wave at them or stand there frozen in fear however if you are hawaiian you might even have an ancestor in the procession who will recognize and stand over you calling now or this is one of mine keeping you safe from the other marchers and though the islands themselves have changed over the centuries, the night marchers have not, and are still feared so much that people are told not to mention them after sunset, lest they inadvertently call them. These islanders also planned their buildings carefully, as to not cross the night marchers' path, otherwise your house, school, or strip mall might receive some late-night otherworldly guests. In fact, this knowledge is so prevalent in Hawaii, people avoid living in houses with one door facing the mountains and the other facing the ocean, for it is believed the night marchers will pass through the building rather than go around, which is something many non-native people have learned the hard way over the years, including one famous incident during World War II. And this phenomenon is said to happen even to this day, but let's see what you guys said over there. Uh, would you bow down to the night watchers? Would you stand there and wave at them, or are you just not sure what you would do? Uh, one for the uh, reverence, two for not caring and just standing and waving, and three for the unsure. Let's see what you guys said over there. And it looks like over here in the YouTube chat room. Uh, what do we have here? We got Errol Taylor says one absolutely would show reverence. Uh, preliminal, preliminal says one absolutely would show reverence. Uh, man, Danny Moe, oh, I'm sorry, I was at the wrong question. I am so sorry, guys. Let's try that again. Errol Taylor with the one, definitely. Uh, guideline strike Jerry Forbes, or Jeremy Forbes says, three, my opinion is fallen angels. Well, that's definitely a very popular opinion. Uh, Sandy B says, hi, guideline strike. Uh, guideline watcher, watcher, gods, no, you pray. I got to say, that's not bad advice. Sandy B with the three with the prayer hands. Uh, er, er, Mandani Mall one would happen automatically. Possible. Uh, Errol Taylor coming back with a three over here. 
Jeremy Forbes, three, pray, pray, pray. Hey, that is never, ever bad advice. Uh, Preliminal, four, I'd tell them to call on Jesus and go into the light. Uh, He's trying to exercise the night watchers over here. I love it. Uh, Preliminal, ghosts are trapped. They should go into the light. Again, he's over here trying to exercise the night watchers. And still not the craziest thing I've ever heard. Uh, Errol Taylor again with the three just to make sure that I got it right this time. Uh, I do once again think I was in the wrong part of chat a moment ago. So Errol Taylor with the three very unsure uh, what they would do in that situation. I don't know what I would do in that situation. Like one side of me would be very reverent. The other side of me would be like, oh, it's a paranormal thing. I've got to do this. Uh, Alva Yarder with the one. She would definitely show reverence. And you remember a moment ago, uh, our speaker here said that uh, in World War II, there were some incidents with the night marchers. Well, it turns out that the U.S. military paid no attention to the Hawaiian traditions of how to build their bases on the island. And unfortunately, they learned the hard way. Back in the 1940s, the U.S. Army set up an airfield on Oahu and then built barracks on the runway. These barracks faced the sea in front and backed up against a hill. And Japanese-American soldiers recruited in Hawaii lived in these barracks alongside local Hawaiians. One night, a soldier began to toss and turn. The barracks got deathly cold, and a powerful smell filled the room. Then he began to have strange dreams, and all of a sudden, he couldn't breathe. He struggled and gasped, fighting against the hands choking him. But when someone lit a flashlight to see what was going on... He saw nothing but men in their beds. Oh, the soldier figured it must have been a night terror and went back to sleep. And, of course, with just one person witnessing this, uh, one could say it could be a variety of sleep uh, paralysis or sleep uh, uh, malfunctions, if you will. However, it turned out that he was not the only one that experienced this. But it happened again the next night. The strange smell. The chilling cold, and this time, even more soldiers felt hands squeezing around their necks and hearing strange sounds. Someone even reported seeing lights heading toward the beach, but again, no assailant was found. The soldiers of the barracks approached their senior officer, en masse, demanding to be moved to separate housing. But when they explained why, their captain laughed it off. Surely this was some kind of prank or trick to get better housing. Nah, I'm not buying it. And, of course, from a normal, rational, logical point of view, that makes sense. However, the senior officer would soon learn that there's more than meets the eye to this case. But then that night, the captain himself heard the noises outside. And when he came out to check, he was suddenly frozen in place as the smell of sulfur filled the air. Suddenly, he felt an invisible force push him down to the ground and hold him there. His face inches from the earth. He turned his head and looked up as far as he could and saw dozens of pairs of feet floating past him on the ground. And only once they had all passed did he feel the pressure lift off his body and was able to run terrified back to his quarters. Now convinced that he personally had experienced something paranormal, the captain sought out an old Hawaiian man who had lived in the area all his life. And the old man explained that the barracks were most assuredly on the path of the night marchers and advised that they closed the beachside door and opened another door on a different side of the building instead so it didn't face the mountains. And as soon as they did, the nightly attacks ceased and the soldiers and their commanding officer gained a new respect for the power of the land. And it just goes to show, just because you don't believe in it doesn't make it any less real uh that kind of reminds me of another analogy i used to use i can take a fork walk over to a light socket stick it in it and it's going to pop me and send me on my butt whether i believe in electricity or not the electricity still remains right Uh, but what you what do you guys think do you guys think that hawaii is definitely a state of mystery has a large variety of paranormal instances or do you think that we're barking up the wrong tree once again in the end ladies and gentlemen all you can do is look at the evidence apply a little common sense and you be the judge 
we got to close it out. That's right. That's it for this episode of the Dark Wolf's Den show for Wednesday, September the 8th, 2021. So whether you're on the edge of reality, the edge of the galaxy, or the edge of your seat, we're glad you chose us to be right there with you. Ladies and gentlemen, the den may be closing, but don't you worry. The weekend fun has only just begun. That's right. Tomorrow, September the 9th, 2021, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central, I'll be back with an all-new episode of the Dark Wolf's Den Show. That's right. Tomorrow night, we're going to be talking about sea monsters across the world. We didn't get a lot of sea monsters in the Hawaii episode, but I promise you we will be covering them tomorrow night. And heck, you never know, we might find a Hawaii sea monster in there, right? And that is, once again, tomorrow, Saturday, September the 9th, 2021, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central. Then on Friday, September the 10th, 2021, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central, our buddy AJ the Rippin' Rabbit comes back with an all-new episode of the Rippin' Rabbit Hole live show. That's right. On Friday, he's going to be talking about coincidence theory. We used to call it conspiracy theory. I say used to because all of the conspiracy theories we had were proven to be true. So we run out of conspiracy theories, and now we've got coincidence theories. That's right. AJ will be talking about all that and more on Friday, September the 10th, 2021, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central, right here on Rippin' Common Sense Radio, the Rippin' Rabbit Hole. Then on Saturday, September 11th, 2021, in my opinion, what should be a holiday in this country, but heaven forbid, uh, he will be talking about Remember, uh, and I remember September 11th, 2001. Uh, do you? Where were you when that happened? Uh, AJ will be talking about Remembering on Saturday, September 11th, 2021, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central. Then on Sunday, September the 12th, 2021, AJ the Rippin' Rabbit comes back with one more episode to round the weekend out right. That's right. He's going to be talking on Sunday about animal politics. That's about what it seems like is going on in Washington right now. Just a bunch of animals acting like they're doing politics, right? Or perhaps it's about the politics that actually occur in nature amongst animals. Or are there any? I guess you're going to have to tune in on Sunday, September 12th, 2021, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central, to the Rippin' Rabbit Hole live show to find out the answer, right? Uh, and that is going to round out the weekend here on Rippin' Common Sense Radio. Uh, and the weekend started early this week, right? Started on Tuesday this week with the Tuesday night videos and it turns out I did not retain the belt on the Tuesday night videos Sandy B come in on a mission and she accomplished her mission congratulations Sandy B the three time now winner of the Tuesday night videos that's right then on last Sunday we also had another game show we had the beat Eugene episode 3 last two or last Sunday and that actually had an interesting outcome Check it out. Here is who was able to beat Eugene. Turns out nobody was able to beat Eugene. Eugene won the Beat Eugene game last Sunday, uh, followed by Eric the Fred, Terry Taggart, and in fourth place, rounding out the top five or top four, ladies and gentlemen, was yours truly, The Dark Wolf's Den Show. That right? That's right. So nobody actually won the Fantastic Fun Show. They did not, or the Beat Eugene. They did not beat Eugene. That's right. Uh, if you want to try to beat Eugene next month, we do that once a month at the beginning of every month. The first Sunday uh, is the beat eugene show come on by and see if next time maybe you can do just that and the tuesday night videos are held in the 24 7 backstage lounge on the ripping rabbit hole.com that is r-i-p-o-n r-a-b-b-i-t-h-o-l-e dot com that's right that is my favorite hangout that's where you're going to find a load of fun stuff not just our 24 7 backstage lounge once again my favorite hangout where i'm going to be right after the show with the rest of the rabbits but we also have uh groups over there from the dark wolf's din show group to uh the uh rabbit players and as well as the uh uh 
Lucid Dreaming, the uh, Rippin' Rabbit Hole Group, and a large variety of others. So if there's any topic you're interested, I'm sure there's something over there just for you. Uh, we also have a load of recipes on the site. It is updated every day with uh, new news and ongoing events, but they seem to have a lot of recipes on there as you go down. And once again, that site has saved my rear end more times than not. So through the week, if you're looking for recipe ideas, come on over to the RippinRabbitHole.com. It's full of many, many fun things. And down at the bottom of every page is the live radio player. So uh, if we're not live at the moment, you can check out our previous shows as well as our live shows playing when they are live. Uh, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. It's been an amazing time, and I am so glad to be able to kick this weekend and every weekend off right with you guys here on Rippin' Common Sense Radio. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jerry Hicks, also known as the Dark Wolf. And on behalf of AJ the Rippin' Rabbit, Chick Mandela Effect, Michael Musco, Walt House... Uh, Tom Bayless in Red Shed Studios for this amazing music we're listening to right now. Get down with it, Tom. If you're looking for a custom soundtrack for your next project, contact Red Shed Studios. Information in the description below. On behalf of all these folks and our, our amazing uh, YouTube monitors over there, my name is Jerry Hicks, also known as the Dark Wolf, and you've been listening to the Dark Wolf's Den Show exclusively on Rippin' Common Sense Radio Network, the Rippin' Rabbit Hole. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, remember, stay awake, but dare to dream. Good night, everybody. How? Yeah. That's right. What's the truth in this riddle? Is love really just this simple? I can't seem to find my way in this world that never stays. Just illusion, manifestation, or a dark delusion. Is this real or just illusion? I'm lost in a wonderland of confusion.
Thank you once again, everybody, for such amazing patience. We will see you all tomorrow night. Bye, everybody.